Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is the video that I've been getting asked to make for quite a while now. In this video, I'm announcing that I'm putting out the call and starting to build a list of people that are interested in building one of my partial hand prosthetic devices for themselves. My plan for right now is to acquire all the parts needed to build four or five DIY kits and then make them available to qualified amputees. I figure that since the idea to bring to market this kind of device by only selling it as a DIY kit is largely untested, it would probably be best to do so in a super slow and controlled rollout. Basically, I'm going to use these first few kits to really figure out what's going to be required on my end in order to best support people trying to build a project with this level of complexity. How it goes with this batch will greatly impact the pace and direction of this project going forward. So let's talk about what the perfect participant slash applicant is going to look like to me. And for right now, this opportunity is only for the continental US, primarily because I plan to use USPS if it fits its ships boxes to distribute the kit. And also, so I don't run afoul of any VAT or international taxation or import-export laws. So for this run, I'm looking for amputees that have had their index through pinky fingers amputated through the metacarpal phalangeal joint and have retained the entirety of their thumb. It's also important that for at least this first batch that all of their metacarpals are still their full and natural length. The metacarpals being their natural length is important because that sets up the geometry for the device, primarily the closing angles for the fingers relative to the thumb, as well as the position of the other major component groups. Basically, I need as much real estate for everything to fit as I can on these first few kits. I might be able to be less rigid with this requirement in the future after I get a couple batches of these out in the wild, but for right now, full-length metacarpals only. Second, the ideal applicant's amputation site needs to be well healed and stable. Your residual limb needs to have already reduced and settled into being relatively a consistent size and shape. If you lost your fingers within the last six months, this probably isn't the deal for you at this time. It usually takes between 9 and 12 months for everything to really settle down and for the scar to harden enough so that you can use the kind of socket that is being used with this device. If you fall into that category, maybe check back when I announce the second batch of devices. Also, the ideal applicant needs to have mentally healed from losing their fingers. Losing fingers is a really big deal, especially if they were traumatically amputated from your dominant hand. The ideal amputee needs to have already come to terms with their loss and, for the most part, kind of figured out their new normal. I mean, honestly, I'm going to be a little less than excited working with someone that is still super angry about their situation. So, definitely looking for people that are well past the anger phase of grief. Next, they're going to need to have access to some basic tools. Sure, not everyone has access to a full machine shop, but to successfully fit the printed parts and assemble this device, you're going to need at minimum a solid drill press with preferably a 3 inch screwless toolmaker vise so you can hold the parts square and drill out the holes for the pins on the finger assemblies. They're also going to need to use that vise to securely hold the pieces of the fingers while they use a file and only a file to fit the pieces one to another. It would also be beneficial if they had experience with tapping tiny holes by hand. The primary thread that I use on this device is 440, although there are several instances that are threaded 256 and 172. Of course, if fitting the printed components, drilling the hinge points, and tapping the holes is too much of a daunting task, you can always hire a local machine shop to complete those operations, although that is going to increase the overall cost of the project for you. Also, experience casting and working with fiberglass resin would be super helpful. But again, if that's too far out of your wheelhouse, that could be hired out to a local O&P clinic. So, still interested? We need to see if your residual limb is about the right size for this gear. After all, it's not going to work super awesome if you're trying to stuff a size 12 into a size 8. And we should probably figure that out before anybody gets a bunch of time or money into this project. So, here's how we're going to check. 
The last time I had this prosthetic hand apart with the socket out of the frame, I took it as an opportunity to use my Creality Ferret scanner to scan the profile of the socket so that I could post the STL up on the printables website where anyone who's interested can download and print a copy of my current socket for themselves. Amputees interested in building this device should download and print the file at 100% scale at 40 or so percent infill, then try it on and see if the residual limb fits into the void space of the socket. Don't expect it to be the most comfortable. After all, it's a socket for my hand, not yours. I'm just trying to make sure that there's going to be enough thickness for the socket with the finger bases and the swivel plates over the end of your residual limb. If your residual limb does fit into the void space, send a picture of it to missingpartsclub at gmail.com so we can set up a Zoom call and talk about what you're hoping to regain by building and using one of my prosthetic devices for yourself. I'm super excited to see the response I get from this community, along with being able to really gauge the honest interest in bringing this device to market. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks for watching. What's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? Yeah. What do you want? What do you want? Oh!